Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by to visit the channel for this upcoming game preview. If you want to stay updated in the world of college football, if you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and select all so you will not miss out on another video. Also, like the video, share the video, it helps the channel grow, and give me your score prediction in the comment section below, even if you agree or disagree with my score prediction. Now we got a huge matchup in the SEC and it's the rematch of the SEC championship game last year between Alabama and Florida. Both teams have lit up the scoreboard this year and this game has the potential to have the same kind of fireworks from the SEC championship game. The Crimson Tide comes into the game with a seven game winning streak over the Gators. The last time these two teams met in Gainesville, it was a 38 to 10 route in 2011. And before you ask, yes. This game will be aired on CBS with your favorite announced team, Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson in the 2.30 Central time slot, 3.30 Eastern as expected. I know you Bama fans really love to hear Gary Danielson talk about how much it's going to take for Florida to beat Alabama, but let's, you know, despite all of that, let's get started how we always do the tale of the tape. So as we review the tail of the tape, we have noticed that Alabama's SP Plus ranking has dropped a little bit after their sleepwalk against Mercer. The Crimson Tide had a rating of 32.9 and is sitting at a 29.8 rating. The Gators climbed up five spots from 14th to 9th from the previous week as their defensive rating played a big part in it as they went from 32nd to 23rd in defensive SP Plus. Now, Bill Connolly's SP Plus ranking gives Alabama a 68% win probability, and Vegas opened the line as Alabama as a 15-point favorite. The Gators faced two overmatched teams in state as they dominated both Florida Atlantic and South Florida by a combined score of 77-34. Against South Florida, the Gators did what they wanted without any resistance from the Bulls as the offense produced over a 50% success rate in the first three quarters and proceeded to shut it down in the fourth quarter. But if I'm going to talk about the Florida offense, I must talk about the quarterback controversy between Emory Jones and Anthony Richardson, who the Florida fans have dubbed AR-15. When you take a look at the stat line between the two quarterbacks, it looks like the easier choice is to choose Richardson over Jones. Now, I understand the why of wanting to go with Richardson. He's been explosive when he's in the game. And against South Florida, he was three for three with 152 yards passing, four carries for 115 yards and accounted for three touchdowns. His success rate in the game was 100%, and he had 50 yards per pass attempt. Now, it's an obvious small sample size. Completely understand. But it feels the offense has more juice when he's on the field, and everyone loves a shiny new car that just so happens to be the backup quarterback. His measurable screamed at Prescott because of his size and weight, but that's about it. I don't see him having Dak's ability yet to process reads and hit the intermediate throws, as he did at Mississippi State. Now, the Florida fans have a love-hate relationship with defensive coordinator Todd Grantham. One minute, he's one of the best defensive coordinators in the country, and the next, they are ready to get rid of him. It's easy to fall in love with his aggressive, attacking style of coaching, but when it doesn't work, it leaves the defense vulnerable against offenses who can stress them. So far this year, the defense has generated 11 tackles for loss on scrimmage plays, and their secondary has averaged at least a 10% of havoc plays they created on pass breakups and interceptions in the first two games. Now, if there is one gripe, it's that the first half defense of Florida plays like their sliders are turned all the way up, but the second half falls off. But that is primarily due to substitutions since the game is currently in garbage time at that moment. There's not much we can glean from beating an FCS opponent last week but Nick Saban wasn't happy with Alabama's effort and execution. The only thing I can say is that practice is going to be brutal for this, this team this week. At times, the offense looks as if it is humming at peak efficiency, but there are times where the offense struggles a little bit. Quarterback Bryce Young has been fantastic for Alabama in his first year as a starter, already throwing for seven touchdowns, and if you're into this kind of thing, Westgate over in Las Vegas has him as the current Heisman frontrunner at 3-1 to one odds. It's a little too early, but it's college football and anything can happen. Now, on the other side of the ball, the defense has been lights out. And yes, I understand they have Miami and Mercer for their first two games, but their defense is playing faster and it was expected it would be ahead of the offense this year. The front seven has been extremely disruptive. They have averaged over 22% of stopping their opponent's carries at or behind the line of scrimmage. 
So if you're not familiar, I am using my rating system that is based on the principles of ELO, but it is structured by the point differential of the average college football team. So basically how ELO works is after every game, the winning team will take points from the losing team. The difference between the ratings of the winner and loser, it determines the total number of points gained or lost. If the high rated team wins, then they receive a fraction of the rating points from the low rated team. But if the lower rated team wins in an upset, then they'll get a rating boost based off of their current ranking. So the bigger the upset, the bigger the boost. And if the favorite also plays poorly against a team they suppose to dominate and win, then they will lose points off of their overall rating. Now, these ratings are different from the tail of the tape where I use Bill Connolly's SP+. The model comes out to Alabama with a 78% win probability, and it is calling for the tie to win by the score of 35 to 22. For the year, the model is decent. It has a record of 68 and 23, which comes out to 75% of the winners straight up, and it is one game out of 500 against the spread with a record of 45 and 46. Last week, it had the best week so far. It went 35 and 6 straight up and 21 out of 20 uh, against the spread. So I'm only using the model against FBS competition. So any games involving FCS schools are not used. And just because it had a decent week last week, I definitely expect an overcorrection for this upcoming week. We have a few questions that need to be answered here. The first question is, has Florida's defense improved enough to take that next level? And the second question is, how will Alabama respond to a true road game in a hostile environment with a new offense? Keep in mind, we did not have a true road game in 2020. The crowds were definitely taken out of the equation, so we didn't get an opportunity to have that full-on college football game environment. And I know the advanced numbers like Alabama's offense against Florida's defense, but the Swamp is a tough place to play, and that can affect the communication for Alabama on offense because Bryce Young likes to do a lot of checks at the line of scrimmage. So another thing, be prepared to hear once again about how much Alabama struggles with mobile quarterbacks. I've already talked about it enough about how it just doesn't help teams against Alabama, but accurate quarterbacks hurt Alabama more than mobile quarterbacks do. So not going to explain it anymore. So I'm just going to leave that alone. I don't know what Dan Mullen is going to do with Richardson and Jones. My gut tells me it's going to be more of a Chris Leak, Tim Tebow situation, but Jones hasn't fared well this year. He's had more turnovers. He's a little sloppy in both games. And Alabama is a type of team that will make you pay when it comes to making mistakes on offense. Another thing to note, keep an eye on the middle eight, which is the last four minutes of the second quarter and the first four minutes of the third quarter. Dan Mullen really loves to win the middle eight. It was exactly how they got back into the SEC championship game. If Florida wins the toss, they're definitely going to defer so they can have the ball within the last four minutes of the first half and throw the kitchen sink at Alabama, then get it back again to start the half. I see Mullen potentially calling a game like his final game against Alabama in 2017 when he was at Mississippi State, where they played keep away, they stayed ahead of the chains, and they tried to force Alabama into quick offensive possessions by blitzing them all over the place and just forcing Jalen Hurts to make quick decisions. The big difference between Alabama in 2017 and this year is, one, Alabama has a lot of guys up front, and they have a lot of experience on the end. And that 2017 squad on defense was limping into the last part of the season. I mean, they could hardly feel the defense. In the end, I believe Florida is going to make a game of it early. The crowd's going to be in the game, but I see Alabama pulling away to the score of 38-24. And with that being said, that's a wrap for another game preview. Let me know what your thoughts are in the game in the comment section below. Give me your score prediction and tell me why your respective team is going to win it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please give the video a like. It doesn't cost anything. And if you love college football as much as I do, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay updated with the latest previews and the occasional highlights. And as always, thank you for watching and thank you for visiting the channel.